I read the news today, oh boy, about a lucky man. Even in this early take, he has a voice which sends shivers down the spine. He heard what so many others had missed. George Martin, who made the Beatles brilliant and revolutionised music in the process. He was not born into music. His father was a carpenter from the Holloway Road in North London, but he was surely born for it. A talented pianist from the age of five, he could play by ear. But the Beatles' demo tape sent to him in 1962 was less than pleasing to that ear. George Martin later admitting he thought their music was rubbish. But he knew the four boys from Liverpool had something. Even though they had uh, nothing really behind them, they were still fairly irreverent even in those days, which I, which I loved. You know, I, I, I like a little bit of rebel in people. They, they had tremendous charisma. I knew that that alone would sell them. Love, love me do. You know I love you. He signed them up a few months later and they released this, their first single. George Martin had already made his mark on the band, controversially swapping the drummer. And I said to Brian Epstein, if when we do the next session, I mean, I don't want to interfere with the Beatles and what you're doing with them, that's fine. But I'm going to provide the drummer. You know I love you. Working together, their music became more complex, more layered, which wasn't without its challenges. The hard stuff was the complicated harmonies. Yeah, it was hard to do them live on stage. Like, for instance, No Woman. That kind of thing. That was good. No other man was okay, wasn't it? It was hard, though. It was okay, but it was hard. He's a real man Sitting in his nowhere land Walking on his nowhere hands I said something And when Martin, who'd been classically trained, suggested adding strings to yesterday, McCartney was initially less than thrilled. And George said, I've got an idea that a string quartet would sound really good on that, which is five, um, would sound really good on this. And I said, oh, I don't think so, George. And he said, well, let me try it. Let's try it. And if you hate it, we'll just wipe it and we'll go without it. But of course, when I heard it, I loved it. Yesterday. Abbey Road Studios became their playground and they played together, breaking the old established rule where bands did their thing and left the rest to the producer. I took John's voice off as a separate item and put it on a quarter inch tape and turned it back to front. And I played it to John when he came back. He said, that's gear. George had done little of the, uh, no rock and roll when we met him, and we'd never been in a studio, so we did a lot of learning together. He had a very great musical knowledge and background. In a career spanning seven decades, George Martin worked with many other big names. But as tributes poured in today, it was for his work as the fifth Beatle that he will be best remembered. He was a gentleman and he was very different than the Beatles. They were four scruffy kids from Liverpool and here comes Sir George Martin in his suits and ties. In a way, it should not have worked, but it did brilliantly. The Beatles' music has touched every single person on the planet and will, and will forever. The news of his death was broken by Ringo Starr on Twitter. A short while later, Sir Paul McCartney described George Martin as a second father. He said, the world has lost a truly great man who left an indelible mark on my soul and the history of British music. God bless you, George. <laughs>